What's up, guys? Here with you, SC Wonder Kid, episode 152. Here with my guy, Bretton. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Um, I'm doing so wonderful that it can only be rivaled by the city of Wrexham. <laughs> and Alex, I know in Europe it is not that huge. No, second But I got to tell you. Second straight promotion. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, you know, it, it's just an amazing story. I mean, bought for $2.5 million, bought obviously by Hollywood, well, one B-lister, one A-lister, but Rob McElhenney has his roots in Philadelphia. Ryan Reynolds is a megastar, Canadian megastar, but, a, you know, he's Deadpool, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but just to inject what was much-needed money into a, a, a proud working-class uh, town and to see it kind of work out for them after actually, uh, I mean, you know, throwing money at things sometimes works, but you still have to make the right decisions. For sure. And uh, they're back to League One for the first time in 19 years, back-to-back uh, -back promotions for the first time in 150-year club history, um, and uh, you know they've they've uh, they've been taking some losses along the way in terms of monetarily, but I think they're more than happy to keep going with it. But you gotta you gotta appreciate the fact that they were able to marry. Uh, a good footballing um, thing, right? Endeavor with, yes, a reality TV show that has got more Americans uh, feeling less bad about Ted Lasso being being done uh, here. So I just wanted to bring that up, Wrexham. But more importantly, Stockport County doing it without the money, doing back-to-back -back promotions as well from the National League. I mean, come on. Hopefully they put that in the documentary too. Well anyway, well I'm doing well. Uh, beyond that, we had some real amazing shockers, and I can't wait to dive into these Champions League results, the Europa League results, the Premier League results. Has a horse dropped out of the race? We'll find out, uh, but I can't wait to get into it, man. So hopefully you're doing well. I'd imagine you are. And to, you doing okay? And to, you just said it. A horse has dropped out out of the race, and it's so mm -hmm. sad to see him from my perspective. But people, let us know what would you like to see in future podcasts here at FC Wonder Kid. Here in 152, we have to dive in to the Champions League. Champions League predictions because we had the first rounds with some great results. And the wow. first match I want to dive in is Barca against PSG. I warned you, Bretson, that Barca was going to yeah. do something, and they're still huh? unbeaten in their last six matches. Only with... No, right. last six matches? No. Last 13. But Barcelona in their last six matches, six wins. And their last six mm. La Liga games, six clean sheets. It's the Ter Stegen, and more importantly, Pau Kubarzi at 17. Yep. And I said more importantly, yep. and I didn't get it wrong. He is that important yeah. at that age. I'm shook. Yeah. Kubarzi. It's, it's true. It's it's true. And only, I think, uh, over the last eight games for Pau Kubarzi, uh, since he's won a you know a spot, rightfully so, in the starting lineup, uh, they've only allowed three goals, oh, right? Shit. And obviously, two of them came at the Parc de Prince. Like, it is not easy to beat, let alone to put three goals up on PSG at the Parc de Prince. A team that right? hadn't in fact, lost I think, in seven months. Yeah. Exactly. 20, 27 games, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the last team to do that, uh, sorry to make any Manchester fans listening uh, sad or pining for the past, uh, I think the last team to do that was Ole Gunnar Sol Solskjaer uh, with Manchester United oh, yeah. at the Parc de Prince, putting Greenwood. three goals. I remember yep. that. Rashford, Greenwood, yeah. oh, different Crazy. times. Different times. But like... But, like, honestly, were you expecting Rafinha to be one of the difference makers? No. Nope. Um, that was interesting. Uh, okay. Pedri with that beautiful pass. Uh, and and oh. they look they look like a team with supreme confidence right now. Mm -hmm. They look like a team that, that could get the job done. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, dare I say it, they look like a team that could go pretty dang far. That could um, win the Champions especially League? Especially given... I, I can't say it like that. I, I don't Why know. Not? I, I, <laughs> Why not? I know, I know. They nullified I know, I know. Kylian I, Mbappe. Come on. They and did. Xavi. Look, the only way or, you convince or, Xavi to stay is or winning yeah. La Liga, which is highly unlikely right. when Real Madrid only have one loss in La Liga, or it's yeah. to win the Champions League. And look, they're contenders. I can't say PSG are going to beat them when I saw what I saw uh, in France. I was a, I was saying Barca was going to go through against PSG before the match in France. 
I am yeah. now more certain about it. Look, it's not 100%, wow. but that's my prediction. No. Barca are going to go well, through. And Kylian Mbappé, is go- this is the first humbling before he goes to Real Madrid. <laughs> it's true. It's true. That might be the last Champions League Parc de Prince game that he plays. Ooh. It might. Ooh. It might. And that that's that's kind of crazy to think because that chapter uh, is obviously the longest one he's ever had in his career. And uh, it, it it kind of never led to anything but a bunch of League One championships, um, you and, know, and, uh, and and some UCL final. I, uh, yes. Since Xavi has been appointed mm-hmm. Barca manager in yeah. November 2021, because accepting that job in November, that is bold in my view. He's yeah. had... 15 professional professional debuts to, to, to Wonder Kids. He's handed wow. that. Unreal yeah. that he's done. And this is the future of Barca, completely trusted by Xavi Hernandez. Whoa. 15 professional debuts Xavi has given. Lamin Yamal, Hector Ford, Pau Kubarzi. That is one of the right. best center backs in the world right now. I, I It's not right. bold to say that when you see the matches against Napoli, when you see uh, the matches against Atletico, and you see the match against PSG. Kubarzi, it, world, wow, wow, wow. I'm not going to say world class. Yeah. Just out of respect. No, no, but like, you know, even in this last two-month period, he's what? He's also made his debut for Spain. Uh, and now Pau Kubarzi is a kind of, I, I'm going to say it. I mean, he's a shoe in he has to be on the roster. It's whether or not he gets a whole lot of time in Brent. Germany this summer. Brenton. You think he starts? I, I don't know. I mean, he had those two friendlies. He, he played junk minutes. But, yeah, I, it's trending in that direction, is it not? Mm-hmm. It is definitely trending in that direction. And and I think, you know, I'm, I'm starting to think that Xavi's stepping away was almost like some 3D chess <laughs> Uh, it was <laughs> 3D chess. Like, uh, what's what's the word when it's uh, alternative psychology or reverse psychology, mm-hmm. right? Oh, it's everything's so bad, everything's so bad, and maybe it just got everybody to kind of coalesce to mm-hmm. to come together to build a team. But who knew it was going to be yet another 17 year old or 16 year old um, that really makes this team gel together? But uh, Alex, I mean, more impressive, but maybe not more impressive, but just as impressive, Alex, as the Parc de Prince win. Right. Mm. For me, was was Pau Kubarsi coming back, Hector Fort getting the start for Barcelona against Cadiz over the weekend and them Fair getting least. the job done and holding another clean sheet mm-hmm. uh, with Agile Felix. Uh, I, I hear it was a nice goal. I have not seen the goal. I'll be honest. Ten goals this um, season. John Felix. He's starting to Good look much, much better now when Barca is Good. in high momentum. And the Barca defense is looking bold with Kubarzi. They're staggering. Yep. Jules Conde that is hitting the gym after Cadiz at 4 a.m. This is <laughs> that's to stop them, Bele and Mbappe. And that is work ethic. That's what Xavi has brought. All the players are like, now, what's going to happen if Xavi leaves? What's going to happen yeah. if Xavi leaves? The players are like, we need we need to do everything to trust this guy because he trusted us. And that's what yeah. I got to say. I think Barca are going to well, go through. Uh, that's my prediction. And the next two matches of well, Barca is PSG and Real Madrid. If Barca wins oof. these two games in the Bernabeu and at home against PSG, yeah. that's a mega statement that this season, this team, can make history against yeah. the Galacticos next season that we all know is going to be a bold team. Barca will it's, be bold it, too. It will be a bold team, and I, I do hope Xavi stays. I'm, I'm going to say it. I hope he reverses course. I hope he stays because this project was should have never been a 12-month or an 18-month project. Um, mm-hmm. So I hope it is some big reverse psychology ruse that just happened to work out perfectly fine for him. But listen, there is one little caveat here. Uh, no, two caveats. Two caveats, yes. The first one is Kylian Mbappe. Is this Kylian Mbappe? And yes, I know they wound up losing the World Cup final. Mm-hmm. But is this Kylian Mbappe in the locker room echoing Didier Deschamps' words, saying, like, we got to at least go out and, and bite this game in the you know, butt? We got to make it our own game. And what they <laughs> did was they put in a phenomenal second half mm-hmm. versus Argentina. Right. They absolutely they did. did. And Kylian Mbappe was the catalyst of that. Is this going to be that Kylian Mbappe? The second one mm. is whether or not Barcelona. I'm, I'm less worried about this. Barcelona. This is not Camp Now. Right. Camp Nou. This is what is it? Montjuic. I don't mm. even know. Where Mont-Juic, is the stadium the uh, that they're playing at? But yes, this is like home, but not home. 
Mm-hmm. So uh, that's I'm less worried about that because wherever Barca supporters go, they generally make exactly. it home. Um, but it is something. It is you. You have to admit it is something to well, to have a hundred thousand people in a stadium. Well, Bretton, this right? is this is that for that's, me a difference make the real difference maker in my opinion in this game of Barca yeah. PSG is if Mbappe plays at striker or plays at the wing, and if Mbappe plays at striker, Barca's defense says thank you. Because Kubarzi and Ronaldo Araujo and Conde are always close to him. But if he plays yeah. at the wing, Mbappe yeah. and PSG have a real chance to surprise people. It has to be Gonzalo Ramos at striker and Kylian Mbappe at the left wing. That should right, be well. the lineup. If they start him again at striker, it'll be an easy job. But let us know. All right. Do you, th- do you think they're going to go through? What, what's your prediction, Bretson? <laughs> Ah, uh, well, here here's where I'm going to pour water uh, on it. I do think Barcelona goes through, but I think it ah. winds up being on penalty. I think I think Barcelona winds up going through on penalty kicks. Wow, we're in for an awesome yep. night, mate, in your predictions. Yeah, I, I, I just, I can't, I cannot discount a Kylian Mbappe. I, I don't think he's fully checked out um, just yet, but uh, I'll be honest. I mean, Barca did wonders with him at Parc de Prince. Well, they really did. My last um, so comment? if they can repeat that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if they can repeat yeah. that, yeah, that'd be that'd be crazy. My last comment is Vitinha. Vitinha mm. looked like a midfielder playing for Barcelona, not PSG. That's Luis Enrique doing wonders. And when I saw Vitinha play the way he did in the Champions League, I almost in my mind I was like, please start him for Portugal. Palinha, Vitinha, Ronevs. We're so lucky for the amount of options we have. So Vitinha. Yeah. Keep going bold because we're all watching. So next, uh, going easy, Atletico Dortmund. Mm. Thank <laughs> Atletico, you. Thank as you. expected, we we said Atletico has never lost any game at home in the knockout stages yeah. in the UCL with Simeone. It didn't happen. 2-1 win. And now in Dortmund, mm. Sinali Duna Park. I still believe uh, Atletico will go through, even though they're playing away. And Dortmund is a tough team, but Edin Terzic, I think, will <laughs> not beat Atletico in the Champions it, League. <laughs> it, it, I, I'm going to agree with this one, too. I think Atleti has has done enough. I think the momentum is there. They looked great uh, dispatching Hirona mm-hmm. over the weekend, unfortunately kicking Hirona out probably for good, out of anywhere, any uh, semblance of them finishing second place. Just another one of my predictions down the drain. <laughs> um, but Atletico, obviously, they now have Antoine Griezmann back and firing on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing here, sure. right? Because he was obviously instrumental there. He's instrumental over the weekend versus Hirona. He was instrumental uh, in that second leg, if I'm not mistaken, against yes. Inter. True. Um, so... Uh, yes, Signal Aduna is Signal Aduna, but one of the biggest things that I have had with Dortmund this year, one of the issues, is getting behind Aiden Terzic. Um, and two, like that core that we all love about Dortmund, which is like playing the Wonder Kids, mm-hmm. right? Um, blooding the next generation. Uh, it just doesn't feel like it's there, right? Now you've got wonderful players Marco Royce, uh, Julian Brandt, uh, Sebastian Haller. I can get behind these guys, but at the same time, that just doesn't feel like the Dortmund that made us all kind of really fall in love with them over the last five, six, seven years. I mean, since you and I started talking yep. years ago, it was Dortmund this, Dortmund that. So that, like, DNA is gone. It doesn't mean they can't win well, a game. We, it just means, like, we spoke Atleti... To, we spoke about yeah. Dortmund when Sancho was there and before Jude Bellingham had even started a game there. So This, this is true. Very yeah. different times. So I, <laughs> I mean, now, yeah, we're looking at, like, y- Yusufa Mukoku, who is just kind of off in his own land. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows what he's doing for them. Uh, uh, Jamie Bino Gittens came back from injury, but at the same time, uh, what what is Eden Terzic's plan for these guys? He let Gio Reyna go, so I'm not going to forgive him for that. Yes, that's a little biased, but when it comes down mm-hmm. to it, it's Diego Simeone versus Eden Terzic. Yep. It's muscle memory for Diego Simeone. It's getting done, and uh, even if it's not at the Wanda, Atleti will go through. Ah, uh, we have the same prediction too. So here, Atletico going through, and now <laughs> surprising yeah. match and surprising Very result yeah. for some people, especially Premier League followers. Arsenal didn't manage to beat Bayern Munich, a team Bayern Munich it, that. They only have one title to win this season, and that is the Champions League, a team that will not make it easy. And if Arsenal beats Bayern Munich in these circumstances that Bayern Munich can only win the Champions League this season for a title, my respect Mm -hmm. for Arsenal will go 
very high because this is Europa, uh, European champions. This is Champions yeah. League football. And this is where yeah. Arsenal have lacked in the past. So, mm -hmm. ah, what, you've, what you believe hey. is going to happen here? <laughs> well, the, the first thing I have to say, at least it was not 5-1. to one. Right? At least. Uh, last three times they've met, <laughs> it was not 5-1. And listen, Arsenal made, made mistakes. Uh, Byron capitalized on a few of them. Fair enough. And uh, they probably could have capitalized on more, but they didn't. It's 2-2. Two -two. I, I still think Arsenal is the better team, even though they're heading to Allianz Arena. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think we were right in saying that Byron had nothing else. They, they got nothing to lose mm -hmm. in this. I think it's going to nick them in the butt. In, at the Allianz. I think they're they're going to be the ones making the mistakes. Um, and I do think Arsenal has enough, has the ability um, to succumb, or to not succumb, that would not be good, to overcome um, what was definitely some... The ability uh, they have, but will they, Brett? Yeah, <laughs> I, I do. I think Arsenal's going to win at Bayern. I think it's going to be tight. I think mm. it's going to be like, extra, again, extra time penalties. I think we're going to see two of the four games... Um, <clears throat> remaining, I think that we're going to see penalties uh, deciding that, unfortunately. And a lot of that's going to come down to getting rid of the away goals. Uh, so back at the Allianz, I, I don't think that that carries as much weight as it used to. Um, so I'm going to say Arsenal will get it done by a hair at the Allianz in Germany. I'll maybe say by a hair, Bayern Munich gets it done. Come on, if Thomas Tuchel gets knocked out by Arsenal. Yeah. Look, it's not embarrassing because this Arsenal team looks like they're going to make history. And this Arsenal team, sure. created by Arteta in this new era, four years, gets, it's a lot. And since he's, the only title he's really won, okay, not counting the community shield Arteta, it's the right. FA Cup. And the validation that he needs towards confirming a new era is Champions League, Champions League success and Premier League success. And I think, I think that will be the case in the Premier League, but not in the Champions okay. League. So my prediction is for Bayern Munich to win against Arsenal in the Allianz Arena. Because look, if wow. Harry Kane doesn't win mm -hmm. any trophy for Bayern Munich, the first time it happens in at least 11 years not winning a league. That could, yeah. Come on, that's one of the most embarrassing things for a player of his stature, world class, can happen. Can happen. Harry Kane, more than like 45 goal involvements for sure. And he doesn't manage to win a title in a team that is so used to winning. It's poetic. I know. It's disastrous. I don't know what, what, what can be said. But one thing's for sure. Next season, yeah. Bayern Munich are going to have a new manager. And I wanted mm. to ask you, Breton. We have Zidane, Hansi Flick, uh -huh. Jose Mourinho, yeah. Julian Nagelsmann. Who do you think is the best fit for Bayern? It, it's it's funny that it's like nobody knew, right? Nobody knew. Hansi Flick been there, Zidane done that, knew. right? Julian Nagelsmann, you still got the same issues. Yeah, Zidane, but Zidane, I, Zidane, for all I know, is sitting on a beach somewhere, not likely doing anything, right? I I, I don't I don't. This whole wanting to bring Zidane back, I don't think he's coming back for Bayern. I really don't. Juve. Um, more, more likely, yeah, I don't think he comes back really for... I don't know. I thought we already talked about this in the, in the form of Didier Deschamps goes after the Euros. It's well, Zidane's France. Well, we could have first listeners now. here, so Bretson. <laughs> oh, that's true. No, that's like, true, what? but like, no, I mean, but I, I do believe like Zizou's only coming back for that French national okay. team job. I really do feel like like Bleu is obviously in his blood, um, and uh, obviously he's the one that started this whole thing. Okay. Uh, there was no, I mean, there was Le Bleu. You had Michel Platini. You had some great players uh, previous to Zizou, but Zizou was the one that got it over the line. Mm -hmm. uh, so he'll take the torch, in my opinion, from Deschamps okay. uh, with Le Bleu, likely after the Euros, um, because it won't be France winning the Euros. So in Bayern Munich, <clears throat> the future is looking very unstable. So let us know. Who do you think is going to be the manager? And if you think Bayern Munich are going to go through against Arsenal. And now the last yeah. one, the biggest one, yep. Man City, mm -hmm. Real Madrid. 3-3 three, three in the Bernabeu. And this is the stat. Real Madrid have never lost a match, a single match this season, with Aurelien Chouameni starting. Yep. Aurelien Chouameni mm -hmm. will start against Man City. Do you believe this is going to be his first loss, Breton? Um, oh, I've, I'm wrestling with this. Um, uh, I, I don't believe it's going to be his first loss. 
Uh, he proved to be the difference again over the weekend uh, against Mallorca. Um, let's see. I, I mean, I really feel Real Madrid can get this done. They've done it before um, mm-hmm. at, at the Etihad. I really do feel like it's it's going to happen. I, I, uh, I mean, unless so J- Josco Gavardiol is... Yeah, unless Josco Gavardiol is in the habit now of hitting wonder goals. I mean, the guy... 21 years old, 22 years old, hadn't scored a goal yet for Manchester City. In the space of four days, he stores, scores two wonder Great goals. Uh, one is first goal for Manchester City, and then his first Premier League goal uh, against, you know, against Luton Town. But Very it was goals. one, I have no horse in this game, and my palms were sweating the whole entire game. Um, and these are two very, very capable managers, obviously. Nobody needs... Mm-hmm. me to say that right but it's carlo ancelotti versus pep guardiola i think we're literally back into having the conversation again about whether or not pep guardiola overanalyzes this this return like that's he put it. the brain on right? the bench he put the brain on right. the bench at the start and it, it it's it's true and um and they they've they were able to still get out of the bernabeu mm-hmm. three three because so of I, I phil foden um, phil foden is phil officially foden. a world-class player Officially, yeah, and I love that. we saw in the Bernabeu, Phil Foden yep. overshadowing Jude Bellingham. The king of Bernabeu this season. The king of yep. England could be Phil Foden in the Euros. Who will say no to that? Pep Guardiola for know. sure will not. <laughs> and who am I, I to go against Pep Guardiola? <laughs> there's, that, there's, that photo, er, photo, there's that video circulating online of Phil Foden working on that exact shot. Mm. Right? That exact shot shot in training i don't know i don't know the time frame i don't know if the time was you know the the training the day before or whatever it was um but obviously that is a that is a kid that you give him that window he's going to put it away and he put it away and he is feeling it right now um and i really this is so even heading into this i mean you've got You've got the two last. It, it's it's a shame. It's a quarterfinal. I mean, I think we can all agree here. It is an absolute shame that we have to have this matchup could be at final, the quarterfinal. Right? Um, well, it absolutely could. I well, mean, these are the last two champions. Well, but of course Brenton, it could. The, the, but the yeah. being the devil advocates in your argument, it's mm-hmm. the Champions League quarterfinals. It's the one of the best I've seen this last decade. It's been so That's entertaining, true. and I do feel this yes, because but... the opponents are leveled. Real Madrid is very level yep. with City. Barca is very level with PSG. Atletico Dortmund. And then you have a very level Arsenal Bayern Munich too. That one of those teams uh, need to go through, but one of them won't. And it will be tragic. Uh, tragic. I know. And and that's why I'm such a wuss again on, on figuring this out. I, I need to know what people Look, this is what think. I'll say, so. uh, why? Like, what conviction do you have that there is any discernible... Um, aside from the Etihad, aside from Manchester City, aside from the Rodri statistic, mm-hmm. right? Uh, R- Rodri is double or triple the the Aurelian Chouamain. Ah, so based on those statistics, it's Manchester City going through. But my gut is telling me Real Mad- Madrid can get it done away. Well, but if Chouamani does get it, and Real Madrid do get it done, like people are going to say yeah. Chouamani is the new Rodri. No, I'm joking. That's not it's, the case. Well, one of, one of not- those statistics is is dying. One of those statistics is dying. That's true. This coming or week. Rodri or Chuameni will not <laughs> remain unbeaten until the end of the season. It's true. And yeah. this match will be the decider of that. What I got to say on this is my prediction is Man City wins the Premier League. Real Madrid wins the Champions League. <laughs> both wow. are happy. Okay. Both win their titles. I think that could happen at the end of the season. If it happens, don't be surprised. But I just yep. I just was really surprised about Phil Foden just grabbing that game off the neck and making yeah. it happen. Vinicius, Rodrigo, I got to shout them out too because wonderful game by them. Vinicius, okay, was a bit off. And Valverde strike. Mm-hmm. The Valverde Oh, goal. gosh, yes. Was clinical, first touch, immediate. Fede Valverde is world class, one of the best box to box midfielders in the world, and he fundamentally has a Galactico mentality. And those are the types yep. of players that will not leave Real Madrid. That's scary, Brett. Do you think yeah. it's true? Do you think Ancelotti has the um, cojones to start Eder Militao from the get go? He does, and puts so that, uh, Chouameni in cross. And Kamavinga, to have Chouameni where he needs, yeah. Carvajal yeah. has I mean, a I... yellow. Carvajal has yeah. a yellow. He yep. could be putting mm-hmm. someone in fullback and then putting Chouameni in the midfield too. Well, one thing, one thing's for sure. Chouameni will start. 
One, what, yeah. What's not for sure is that at Milita. So it is Man City, though, and an ACL injury. You're never the same. And you're never the same yeah. immediately. So it is yeah. a bold decision. But Champions League predictions here are done. Let us know your predictions. And yeah, like this video for more content just like this. For and now sure. Europa League. Europa League. Oh, That's gosh. Are we going to see a team winning the treble with Bayer Leverkusen, Brett? <laughs> because um, Europa League, yeah. that's the decider. But no, first going with another game. Atalanta, Liverpool. We were shocked, oh Brett. I the was ma- shocked. The massacre of Anfield. The world was shocked. How did <laughs> Liverpool lose 3-0 to Atalanta? Well, answering yeah. myself, Liverpool lost 3-0 mm-hmm. to Atalanta because of Gasperini. And if you don't mm-hmm. know Gasperini, well, you don't love football because this man is the project of Atalanta, a project that has succeeded and gone to the Champions League and yep. very, very interesting team. It's not by luck that they're in these quarterfinals of the Europa League. Gasperini yeah. ball, real, uh, real. I, I have uh, looked up Bergamo um, probably 15 times over the last eight or nine years since Gasparini became coach uh, of Atalanta because I, you know, I didn't really know La Dea. I didn't know uh, Atalanta, but what he has done there is he, he's put them on the map, and obviously he has influenced a whole lot of the young coaches, uh, a whole lot of the football that is played in Serie A. Um, and I know, uh, what was it? It was James Horncastle, mm. uh, his impassioned speech about Gasparini. This is a man that knows uh, more, uh, a whole lot about Serie A football and also is a brilliant speaker. Um, but uh, for him to be put in the same, after this game, uh, in the same mm-hmm. uh, realm of possibly being Liverpool coach, I think is, I don't think is that's interesting. Bold. It's interesting. I don't think that's bold. No, I don't. I don't no, it's I bold. It's, sorry. I just don't think it's out of the the pocket. <laughs> say it. It's not out of pocket necessarily. I think it's kind of out, out of the realm of reality right now because Liverpool is going to be looking for probably like, let's not have ageisms here, but that's what I'm going to do right now. Mm. They're going to be looking for somebody younger, somebody that's going to be able to um, build with a relatively young team with, uh, with egos, with all that stuff. But anyway, what Atalanta did was absolutely phenomenal. It was compounded by, by Liverpool's mistakes. Mm -hmm. It was compounded by, uh, you know, uh, a whole lot of, I guess, naivete, which mm-hmm. is really weird, very, very weird to say because Jurgen Klopp has been here before. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jurgen Klopp has only lost five out of 43 Champions League and Europa League home ties. Oof. And two of those have come to Gasparini. Two oh. of those. Back back in 2020, they played. It was in the group stage. But if any Liverpool fans, and I know it's really tough to do this after watching them lose to Crystal Palace over the weekend, but if anyone is looking for some hope here, the next time in 2020 that they played, reminder that this was a group stage game, Liverpool went to Atalanta, to Bergamo, and they beat them five zip on the backs of a Diogo Jota hat trick. Now, Knockout rounds are different, but 3-0 with Klopp's arsenal behind him. I shouldn't say arsenal. With Klopp's amazing <laughs> talents behind him. I, that's They've done this before, mm-hmm. right? They've done this before to a team called Barcelona. We'll see if they can do it again. I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to rule them out in any way, shape, or form. I think this Crystal Palace result, uh, again, it puts them in kind of a Bayern situation where they got nothing else to lose now. Mm-hmm. Put it, pour it on, boys. If you lose three zip again, who the heck cares? Go out and try and put five spot on Atalanta. Um, but listen, Atalanta, what mm-hmm. they have done has been it's just so fantastic. impressive, and that is that is Gian Piero uh, mm-hmm. Gasparini, and it is him personified and it is a beautiful beautiful thing uh, to see because you see guys like Adamola Lookman mm-hmm. who bounces around bounces around and then goes there and he has a sense of purpose um he's given purpose by Gasparini you see Charles De Ketelaer playing a role in this game at Anfield you see Gianluca Scamacca who was literally a waste of space at West Ham come back he gets reamed out in the press by Gasparini and he rewards him with five goals in seven games in the Europa League. 13 goals altogether. Okay, that could be better. But Skamaka is now definitely going to the Euros. And he might even start for the Azuri. 
all because of Gasparini. I don't know. Um, so I don't know what this starts. Well, a lot of Atalanta well, we'll see. deservedly because Atalanta is it's one of great. the best teams to watch in terms of entertainment and tactics. But Liverpool back to back losses in Anfield in four days. Sheesh. Liverpool fans wow. went talking quadruple at the beginning of 2024 to now realism hit to now only yeah. one title maybe. One title, maybe. It's the Premier maybe. League or the Europa League. And for the Europa League to be the case, they need a comeback against Atalanta. Do I believe it's possible? Yes. Do I believe it will happen? Yeah. Also, yes. <laughs> Come yeah, on, Liverpool. Yeah. I think four to five goals against this team of Gasperini can happen because they do play a lot of open space football. They do trust a lot their philosophy. And that's the thing with Gasperini. That can work for him. Or against him. It's if you know Gasperini's philosophy, then it's very easily to beat. But if you're not aware of the fundamentals of this group with Lukman, Skamak, and Charles Ketelar that you just mentioned, Mart de Rune, mm -hmm. Coop Miners, all of these Coop players Miners, having mm. phenomenal roles, and even the men, the water kid we love, Scalvini, and yep. Kramarski, the goalkeeper, 23 mm -hmm. years old, another player that I think will Arnesky. have a move very soon. So I'm going to go with Liverpool hopefully having a comeback. I think Liverpool will win in Bergamo. And let's see if the club man can make the impossible possible. Because they've done that I in the past. They have. And that's it's definitely not over. Uh, although it feels... Ooh, I don't know. That Crystal Palace, that hangover, um, wow. It, it's it's weird. It's a very weird time. It's weird to fizzle out right now, mm -hmm. especially as I just glanced over, Alex, and I just I saw that Aston Villa I, I is beating you. Arsenal 2-zip. No, just beat. Zip. So just beat. Just, beat. Oh, it's over. It's final. Oh, no. Wow. Uh, but oh yes, we're, we're yes, mentioning wow. this. It's a funeral. How do you but, feel with Asa Milan Roma? <laughs> well, yes, we, we can talk about it in a second because uh, this all ties in. Atalanta, AC Milan, Roma. Yes. We need to remember that this also ties into how many English clubs potentially make it to the group, not the group stage, but the league stage, right, of the Champions League next year. Um, so if Atalanta does not lose, um, it, it's going to be really interesting because Italy is going to get an extra club and England, while I still think they're going to get it, uh, might not get that fifth spot that is so coveted. It might only be four next season in the Champions League um, with this. But anyway, uh, you're right. Yeah, AC Milan Roma talked about it. The Danielle De Rossi train keeps going. Uh, I was not expecting to see Mile Svilar outperform Mike Magnon, mm -hmm. right? And that was really interesting because the last time I remember Mile Svilar, and I might be saying his name wrong, he was a 17 or 18-year-old boy uh, being put in goal against Manchester United, if I have it correctly, yes. uh, 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 for Benfica. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made the mistake that led to the loss. And, and, Mourinho and the was biggest the manager thing, at United. And that's uh, right. And the biggest thing I remember is Rom Romelu Lukaku, because they are both, Svilar and Lukaku, are both Anderlecht products. I remember him, like, giving him an embrace and saying it's okay, and the, the tears coming down his face. And, um, and, and, and it is great to see him win the goalkeeping position under Daniel De Rossi. Uh, it is great to see him. I think he's got, although I think they're losing right now to Udinese, but he has multiple clean sheets in a row. Um, and I think they've only lost once in the last 12 games since he took over uh, in between the net. And I said Roma is a really going to be a really tough squad because they have that manager tailwind, new manager tailwind that is taking them into this. And Pioli seems kind of stagnant uh, in terms of what he's doing with this AC Milan squad. And there you go. It happened. Um, so we'll see. I, I think Milan's not out yet. Rafa Leal's not out yet. Pulisic is not out yet. Um, but AS Roma is tough, man. They are tough right now. Right? It's true. Very tough results. And for AS Milan, losing to Sassuolo, losing to AS Roma, AS Milan yeah. fans, the more time passes, it's not just Allegri to leave Juve. It's Pioli to leave AS Milan too. When you have Tiago Motta available at Bologna maybe. Cristiano Giantoli yeah. will not let that pass, and Juve is doing everything they can for it to happen. I think AS Roma are going to go through in the Europa League. I understand Oof. AC Milan have higher heritage than Roma in European yeah. competitions, but in the last, what, two seasons? Mourinho did a pretty mm -hmm. good job with this team, and this team has the personnel 
and experience towards going to a final of Europa League and Conference League 2. So well. I'm going to say Roma going through against Issa Milan, and I do think it's going to be a draw in this matchup. Uh, I think it's going to go. Fair. It's going to be a good one to watch. Uh, I I hope I hope uh, mm -hmm. I hope Pioli takes the gloves off, lets these guys go. Um, I still think I still believe in AC Milan. I think AC Milan will win this. I think I, they'll get it done. As as much as good stuff I've, as I've said about Roma, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think they're due for a humbling loss. And if they actually do wind up losing to Udinese um, today, one of the worst teams in my opinion in Serie A. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting heading into next week's result. Uh, but Milan, I think they did scrape out a 3-3 yep. draw it's with uh, Sassuolo. And then you have Milan with Teo Hernandez, Mike Magna, Rafael Leon, Reinders. That's a phenomenal I mean, they should, player. should be doing better. They should be doing yep. better for sure with the player they have, players yeah. they have. So the other matchup, <laughs> Marcel Benfica. Benfica won in Stadio de Luz 2-1. I do believe Benfica will pull it through. They will not lose in France. Benfica are going to yep. go through in this matchup. What you believe, Bretton? I I believe in that too. I mean, Marseille. I, the only thing that's keeping me like, oh, maybe there's a shred of hope with that Obama Yang goal, I, that unfortunate Antonio Silva error. Um, but I do think Benfica has the quality. They played phenomenal football for like a good portion of that game, right? Um, I I don't think they're going to just give that up just because they have to travel over to the, uh, you know, to Marseille's beautiful stadium. Uh, I might say, but I, I think, I think Benfica is too strong in this one. Um, yeah, Benfica through, they're mm. going to be fine. I, when you say too strong, I understand where you're coming from because Benfica, just like Liverpool, they, <laughs> just like Liverpool, no, it's still too soon, still too soon, <laughs> but Liverpool, but Benfica bad. will not, well, Benfica don't expect to win the title this season or the fans. Sporting are now the favorites and they're now looking at the Europa League as a way of saying, we can have a phenomenal season by winning the Europa League with Roger Schmidt. Do I believe it can happen? Certainly, yes, Bretton. When I yeah. see Liverpool losing 3-0 to Atalanta and I see Benfica mm -hmm. going against the winner of these two, I'm like, if Benfica go against Atalanta, they could go to the final. And I know yeah. <laughs> Liverpool fans thought the same. <laughs> but Not Benfica... Anymore saw Sporting play Atalanta. They know the game plan yeah. of Atalanta. It's possible. And Benfica fans must believe that there's a way to go to Dublin in this Europa League final, final if right. it's not Liverpool in the semifinals and it's Atalanta. So, Benfica going through and Atalanta, let's see if they go through to West Ham, Leverkusen. Yeah. I think this is the easiest oh. one to predict. Leverkusen I think going it is. through 2-0. They yep. won at home. And now away i don't know I, I don't believe david moyes is going to be well they might be david moyes might be the first team this season to beat by leverkusen but they won't well, go through in europa league because they'll have to uh, score three and i don't think that will be the case well but here here is the thing okay um we are watching that Bayer Leverkusen well, result. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we 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 yes. did see that um uh, this becomes a factor in this game uh, how many days are they going to party for, Alex? They won't party um, because, because I'm. Because I'm <laughs> they're it's tongue, it's tongue in cheek. They 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 are, but it's also the first time. I mean, the Bayern Munich dragon has been slayed, eleven time champions, uh, no more, and we've got our first new title winner, and that would be Bayer Leverkusen. It's it is yeah. I mean, it's whether or not on Thursday. Uh, their minds are all in it. Uh, they could let it slip. I mean, Mikel Antonio uh, is known to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, James Ward-Prowse, uh, kudos, uh, but they were not really there. I mean, one or two shots to 33 shots for Bayer Leverkusen, even knowing that Bayer Leverkusen could win over the weekend. Their their minds were probably also towards that. Um, so I, I do think, uh, yeah, if they approach it with the right mindset, they should be fine at... West Ham, and uh, they should move on. And I gotta say that they they could become. I, I'm I'm slowly moving over to the camp um, of yours that Bayer Leverkusen could become the first team to go undefeated in all competitions, right? In the history and of football. <laughs> in the history of football, uh, that is an important thing to say there. Yes, and I just 
it's amazing. We'll talk about Bayer Leverkusen in a second. I think, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think they're getting surprised by the hammers. For sure, I think Leverkusen will go through too. And please let us know. Do you agree? Do you disagree with our predictions here in the Europa League? But you said it, Bretton. It's the first yeah. Bundesliga title in 11 years that we don't see the name of Bayern Munich on the title. The first time. And the reason that happens is because of Xabi Alonso and Florian Wirtz. If people don't yeah. know about Florian Wirtz, you're living under a <laughs> rock. I'm, I'm going to say yeah. this. Florian Wirtz is the best player in the Bundesliga this season. No doubt. Yeah. It's not Harry Kane and Bayern Munich. It's Florian Wirtz. And I put a challenge in the internet. Name me five midfielders. Five better than Florian Wirtz because this season. Because the importance that he's had, he's been instrumental in this style of play. More than 30 goal involvements. Florian Wirtz. Yeah. And if Germany's going to um, win the Euro in 2024, it's with Florian Wirtz being one of the best players, if not the best player on that team with Toni Kroos and Musiala. So, mate, wow. I am... Wow, I'm shocked. I'm let, let, shocked. Let, let's, just, let's just rewind kind of where <laughs> it came from, too, because Florian Wirtz, he's not old, right? Obviously, he's still 20. young enough to be categorized exactly as a wonder kid here. Um, but let's also just think about what he went through uh, in terms of the ACL... Uh, injury, being out of football for like 10 months, 11 mm. months, uh, fighting back, um, and then somehow being able to fight back, not just to your previous level, uh, but beyond that. Obviously, if this man was, if this kid was 28 or 29, it would have been a little bit tougher to do what he did. The fact that he was as young as he was, but we've we've seen numerous, numerous talents fizzle out after bad injuries like that, and mm -hmm. it was. It was devastating for him. Um, and for the team to pick up the slack under Shabi Alonso, I don't think this could have happened under Shabi Alonso. Or outside or, or somebody ah, else got you. other than a Shabi Alonso. Is what Only Shabi Alonso there. could do um, what he did it by Leverkusen in the world. That's what you're saying, right? But right. like, but he, yes, exactly, right now. And we're looking because a lot of this was propping up his confidence and getting him back there and faking it until he made it. Um, not in a bad way, but more so just kind of like doing the things you can control uh, un until that rhythm comes back. And my goodness, it came back like right away. Mm -hmm. But he's taken it to another level. He came on in the 46th minute against uh, Werder Bremen, second half. And he had a hat trick. Hat trick in the last 20 minutes, Alex. <sighs> hat trick in the last 20 minutes, Florian Wirtz did. And normally he's the assister, but he's an equal opportunist when it comes to this. So I, I Germany is moving up my list of uh top four top rapidly four. Uh, top top four definitely now it's at the euros Euro uh, 2024 and, and germany france crazy. england portugal that's the top four and, and and they have the ability with xabi alonso staying another year now having <laughs> champions league football this team can be built can be built with depth with even more depth than what they have it's true to make a good run a good stab at a very good showing um, in the Champions League next season, and beyond that, if they have a good showing, I don't, I don't know. Maybe Xabi Alonso doesn't leave. Who knows? <laughs> he will. Um, he but will, he, will, he will, probably will. will. Well, one thing's for sure: when Xabi Alonso started at Bayer Leverkusen, they were 17th last season. Now, yeah, that's crazy. This season, zero defeats in the Bundesliga. Five matches are still left. 74 goals scored. 19 only conceded. A different style of play. Amazing. New players brought in. Grimaldo, Schalke, Boniface, Hoffman. All understood the job. And all understood the philosophy of Xabi Alonso. This could be bold. And you click in this video. You know it's going to be all Leverkusen. <laughs> and since it's all Leverkusen. Since we don't know who the manager of Bayern Munich will be next season. We don't know if it's Zidane, Nagelsmann, Flick. We have no idea. But one thing we know, Xabi Alonso will be there and he will be ready to do it again with a stronger team. I think Wirtz will yeah. stay. I think Grimaldo will stay. Boniface and Frank Pong, I think both will go. 40 million release clauses, way too low. But the foundations of, of this team, they will not leave. And just like Eric Ten Hag said, Rome wasn't built in a day. Xabi Alonso goes with the same philosophy and he's built mm. his foundations in that team. So I yeah. do not think that any team in the Bundesliga will be happy to go to Bayern, Bayern Arena next season. So I wanted no. to really uh, give this shout-out. And a question too, Breton. Um, yeah. So, 
Frank Pong's release clause is of 40 million this summer. Man United, mm-hmm. Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Man City, you're interested. Who would you think yeah. is going to get him? Uh, the logical choice uh, for me is br- bring him home to City. Ah! Bring him home to Manchester City. You've got you've got the pool. You've got Kyle Walker likely stepping aside. You've got Rico Lewis that can play other positions. I I I say I say bring him home. Um, and then there. the defenders: Guardiol, Frank Pong, Rico Lewis. Yeah, they're starting to yeah, build the core. Yeah. Man City. It, it it it's 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 interesting, but I just need to say this: like, there's five games remaining, and the only threat, right now that the the title is clinched. The only threat <laughs> is the threat of the um, rotated squad losing oh. one of these odds and ends games that are that no longer really mean anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but 29 games, Alex, 25 wins, four draws, 74 goals scored, 19 goals mm-hmm. conceded in those 29 games versus Bayern's 36 goals conceded in the same amount of games and Alex as impressive as the stars of this team were uh the the litany of of players that you just went through most impressive were the guys that allowed them to rotate period the fact that he turned Nathan Tella Mm -hmm. uh into a functional Bundesliga player Amin Adli from Toulouse, I believe, or yep. I forget, from Ligon. Um, yeah, Jonas Hoffman was a phenomenal pickup. You mentioned Robert Andrick, who they brought through. These role players, I think, provided so much more depth than any of us expected to, and, and there's expected them to. And they're, the, the biggest key, or one of the biggest keys to their success this season has been somehow keeping Ezekiel Palacios mm-hmm. healthy Very for true. an entire season his his ability his work rate his the amount of ground he covers in there and his chemistry that he has with Shaka, Shaka. um it, it has been it has been a massive cornerstone uh for Leverkusen and uh, probably the biggest cornerstone for what they can build a team like you said a, an even stronger team um next year I don't think there's a reversion to a mean coming here Right, I think I think this team has the ability to to beat Bayern and smack them again oh, next yeah. season, and we'll back see. To we'll see. Back, we'll back to back, we'll back to and it's mad a team that before Chabi Alonso in their history they only had two titles, only had two <laughs> titles in their books, and when he leaves next season, if he goes to Real Madrid, who knows? He yeah. could leave with two Bundesliga titles, and obviously Crazy. a DFB Pokal that I believe they'll win, or maybe an yeah. Europa League. Two that can happen, treble? but you said it. You say you're oh yeah. my days, European treble in his second season of Fire Leverkusen. Oh my days, crazy! It's yeah. absolutely yeah. mad and deserving. What a season! Chabi Alonso mm-hmm. has a road, the road leading to Leverkusen Stadium was mm-hmm. renamed oh. by the fans Chabi Alonso Ale, which is the road yeah. of Chabi Alonso. So all roads lead to success when Xabi Alonso is the name in front of it. So I love to see that happen. And it was the right choice by the fans to name the road by uh, Xabi Alonso Road or Avenue yeah. in this sense. Well, <laughs> and, Avenue. And, and just so, just yes. so we update the statistic, it's 43. 43 in a row, or in a row now. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and it is, it's, it's just so impressive what, what Leverkusen is doing. And the crazier, like the crazier thing for me is... You know, last season we saw Christopher Nkunku and what Nicholas Volkrug win the Golden Boot with like 16 goals each or something, mm-hmm. right? This season you've got Harry Kane scoring 32 goals. If you were to look at that statistics, obviously goals don't mean anything or everything, but you would think, okay, Bayern Munich very clearly has some sort of a uh, of daylight mm-hmm. at at the top, right? But then you look beyond that. You've got Serhu Girassi. You've got Lois Appenda. Great first season in the Bundesliga for Lois Appenda. True. Uh, Denise Undav, beyond that. You don't have a Leverkusen striker up there, right? You've got four or five guys sharing the load um, and well, getting it done, and this team is deep because of that. And that that has been that is absolutely down to Xabi Alonso. It's absolutely down to uh, uh, Rolf um, yeah. at, at the head of it and the style of play. And it's... Uh, it's wonderful to watch. It's refreshing. Unfortunately, refreshing Bunny Fist got injured, and we believe that's the reason why there's not uh, the yeah. main guy. And I do think Bunny Fist returning now clinches the Europa League title maybe for Leverkusen. And seeing Ooh. Liverpool losing 3-0 to Atalanta just makes Ooh. me more 
Ah, um, with, I have more belief seeing the 3-0 loss at Anfield of Atalanta that Leverkusen are uh-huh. going to win the Europa League title now. They're the favorites. They're, t- they're the team to beat now with this loss against uh, against Atalanta for Liverpool. So, look, tr- yeah. European trouble is in the cards. I believe it can happen, but do you believe it will happen? Let us know down below. Mm. And which are the transfers that we could see this summer Leverkusen do? Because they are going to invest in replacing the players that we just mentioned, Fring Pong and Boniface, that could be leaving. And a and a and a wholehearted congratulations to Bayer Leverkusen, right? <laughs> wholehearted congratulations. I mean, it's they're also one of the most uh, I gotta say generous online May- to us, right? Oh, they, they like re- they've retweeted things. They've they've messaged us. They've just been uh, so whoever their social admin is, re- reach out. We want to do something. Um, sure. to, to help celebrate, but, uh, what, a, what a season, I mean, we, we talked about, yeah, you're absolutely right. Victor Boniface, um, he is, he is the key to unlocking this, but wow. I'm most impressed with when he, when he went down guys like Patrick Schick, who's also notoriously injured quite a bit, um, picking key, it up. It, it just, it worked out. It's just how much is it good fortune the key and how much is it? Mate. The keys yeah. weird. I, I just say bunny face is very important. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to say it's anyone's true. not the key, but, but weird. And to be fair, yeah. the only possible player to replace Kevin De Bruyne and to match immediately the same level for me in the world of football is Florian Wirtz. And if you do, if you wow. say that's not the case, well, Jude Bellingham too, obviously, but Jude Bellingham will not leave Real Madrid in the next five, ten years. Florian Wirtz could leave Bayer Leverkusen. Could leave for a really good penny of 100 to 150 million. Well, and- but it, if that's the case, Alex, then Pep Guardiola better get on the phone with Xabi Alonso. Oh, yeah. And start gro- grooming him as his, uh, as I'm his sure, replacement. I'm sure Artis is already to doing leave. that. Imagine all the Garden yeah. Virts together. It would be like oh my gosh. Bernard Silva and Kevin De Bruyne again. And they need that. It, it, if they it, see it. Phil Foden, the way he's developing, Arsenal, whew, well, but we never know. Ethan Waneri could be the next Kevin De Bruyne. So <laughs> we we never that, know. That, we never know. We never know, Brett. Now, now that yes. we have a foot foot towards Manchester City winning their fourth in a row. Exactly. Now that we know the results later. against Aston Villa, do you still oh. believe Arsenal are going to win the Premier League, Brett? <laughs> so wasteful in that first half. So, so wasteful in that first half. No, I mean... Listen, I was rooting. I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but obviously we were rooting the same way we root against Bayern. We love their foot. When they play great football, you you commend it. You you tip your hat to it. It's but true. yeah, you always want to see a little parody. You want to see other teams win. Other teams do very well. Um, I would have never guessed, Alex, that on this weekend, that that European hangover would take two title contenders out of it. I, th- I don't see, I, I unless there's an implosion... Unless there's an implosion on Manchester City's side, I just don't see how they relinquish um, control of the top. They, I, they don't do that. I was expecting just don't this, Breton. You know why? Who was uh, the manager why? against Arsenal today? Who was the manager against Arsenal today? Yeah, okay. Unai Emery. Right. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Unai yeah. Emery effect, mates. You can never discredit this man because, in my view, Unai Emery is one of the best coaches in the world. And if you disagree, Ali. honestly, he's underrated. He's underrated. Yeah. He's won back-to-back Europa Leagues nonstop. He has a pos- such a positive effect as an Aston Villa team that now they're a contention team for the top four. When Unai Emery is there, Oli Watkins is one of the best strikers in the world, that it seems. Like 19 what? goals, man. Wow. What? One away from Holland, dude. <laughs> it's uh, like... He's got 30 goal involvements in the Premier League this year. The Premier League is mad right now. And yes, I think my prediction is going to go through. Man City will be the first team in the history of the Premier League to win four in a row. I think that will happen. Pep Guardiola will not have any more draws nor defeats. It's it's clutch time now with De Bruyne, Phil Foden, World Class, Rodri, Stones, Haaland being doubted by many people. And Haaland, this this weekend, another record broken. He's the first player to reach 56 goals in the Premier League in his first two seasons. What? Mm. And it's only going to keep going. I think it's going to be more than 60 by the end of this season. Because, yes, Haaland is going to tick now. Tick now. And... 
when we say this, Bretton, like we we, mm-hmm. we mention a lot the Premier League in all our podcasts. We see the Premier League. We've seen it for 150 weeks in a row for sure. <laughs> and yeah. the top four, I think, has never been as difficult as it is. Because now we see a Newcastle team beating 4-0 Tottenham. A Newcastle team mm. that we see the foundations there. Brun Guimarães, Botman, Alex, Alexander Isak, uh, Kieran Trippier. Uh, uh, players that will not leave this team. Players that want to make history in this team. And I see Newcastle Gordon. a better team. I see Aston Villa a better team. I see Tottenham with Anche Postogoglu a better team. But I don't see... Pochettino with Chelsea looking too good. Only Cole Palmer. And I certainly don't see a Man United team with the quality to finish top six the way they play. This is a real problem. And once again, we see that Eric Ten Hag will be sacked. I'm saying it, Bretton. Uh, I really believe it's the case. It's a prediction here in minute 55 of the podcast. But it's a prediction that I believe our listeners deserve to listen. Because I do not believe Uh, you'll stay, Bretton. I I don't don't think... And we had I don't a think you can. We you, yeah, debate, we did have a debate. I mean, Ruben Amuri it's, it, is a better manager than Eric Ten Hag. Uh, yeah, I, you know, who, who, I, I bet you, I bet you, they go out and try and throw money at Gasparini instead, instead of Amarim, who? because that's the type of decision that they, they would wind up making, I guess. But it is Radcliffe. But Liverpool, this is or, going to be or United, or well, really any any of them. I, I mean, think United I, who, might who go knows? for a great There's going to be a battle. United might yeah. go for a Graham Potter, and everybody's. And there we are again. Shook. Right. <laughs> there we are again. There we are again, and, no. and they're, then they're going to turn on Ratcliffe, and no. But listen, uh, Anthony. Okay, first first point I got to make <laughs> because we jumped from we jumped from Newcastle Spurs, we jumped over to Bournemouth, top Manchester four, United top for a second. Four, Man United. And and Anthony Anthony Areola mm. um, oh, yes. is is doing wonders with Bournemouth, and I don't know what's going on, but Spanish. Spanish managerial golden era, whatever you want to call it. Um, there are a lot of great From the Basque area. Spanish. I mean, it's it's crazy, dude. It's Iraola, crazy. Iraola, Chabi, uh, Alonso, Chavi, I mean, uh, Lopetegui, yeah. uh, Unai yep. Emery. They're all from the Basque yep. area. They're not from Madrid. Yeah, got to say. It's mad. Like, that's what, crazy. What do they have in the Basque great. area? <laughs> it's the culture. Yeah. I mean, Catalonia is not doing too bad for themselves, too, with Michelle and, and some of the other ones. But, like, it's pretty awesome. So Anthony Areola, you got to give him credit. Um, mm-hmm. He's uh, reigning manager of the month right now with Bournemouth. True. Um, he, I mean, he's a better manager, I think, than anyone's giving him credit for. Mm-hmm. And he had to put, synthesize a team that, yeah, he's got some backing now. They're buying really intriguing players that are young players that he somehow has to fit all together, and it's it's working out very nicely. I think a lot of people expected them um, after that start to the year to mm. just continue to go down, and he has been phenomenal. 2-2. Probably should have been a win against Manchester United if it weren't for Bruno Fernandes. Exactly. Um, but I'm, I'm there with you. Eric Ten Hag is not the he, – he's showing that he has nothing else to offer. Who's at That's fault what he's now? showing. Who's at fault now, Eric Ten Hag? Is it Ronaldo? Uh, is it Jaden Sancho? Is it Varane that you had <laughs> problems Ronaldo? in the past? The fault is yeah. of Rashford, in my view, because if we see the output of Rashford at left wing, oh. it's nowhere mm. near what Garnacho had in the past. Garnacho should play at left wing. Rashford should have a reality check, and it's best for both yeah. worlds for Rashford to leave. It's best for Man United, and it's best for Marcus Rashford too. That. Look, honestly, imagine if he had gone to PSG when we were all saying yeah. he should have last season. He has these moments, yeah. these glimpses that he just looks like he's world class for five games, and then inconsistency hits. And I do believe that Jaden Sancho should and was frustrated with a player like Rashford getting the PR that he's getting and starting ahead of him when he sees the quality that he has and he thinks of the future of England and he looks at himself and not at a Marcus Rashford. And yes, I'm saying that there's a bit of bit of tension right there because Garnacho left wing, Hasmus Winterhoyl in the striker and Jaden Sancho at right wing, that would cook with Brun Fernandes, Kobe Maino and a new defensive mid that it could be an Onana, but a defensive mid yeah. that would be physically present since Kobe Maino is still 18 years old. Not Shronevs. Oh. Do not get Shronevs because it's two double pivots that are very similar. Yes, I'm saying for a, a Man United not to get a Portuguese wonder kid. <laughs> that everybody's mm. saying 100 million worth. I'd rather him go to Man no. City. But uh, I oh. said that of Garnacho. <laughs> 
<laughs> I said that about Garnacho going left wing. And I mentioned Man City briefly. And Man City, Breton, have finished ahead of Man United 11 seasons in a row. 11. Do I believe wow. Eric Ten Hag will be the man to change this? No. No, no, no. no. And uh, Ruben Emery, no. I've said it, he could be the man to do that. <laughs> It, it's it uh, we're, or good. get we've got oh. or, or, or get the man that beat Amari multiple times and knocked him out of Ooh. the Europa League. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, I'm Gasparini. kidding. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm riding. Mean, I'm riding yeah. that Gasparini change. You know what? More likely, Gasparini should go to an AC Milan. Oh yes, that's what I'm gonna say there. All right, that makes sense. He's done it once before. Like it didn't that. work out when he was Inter boss, you know, many years ago. But he has a system now, and he has a system that I think could work at AC Milan. But yeah, back at back to this. And Ten Hag. There's some things that have mm -hmm. happened with Ten Hag. He walked out of the press conference. He's throwing shade at young players on his team, whether it's Garnacho, who knows? It's he, it's veiled criticism. I I, I mm -hmm. think he knows that the end is nigh. I exactly. think he knows that the end is nigh. And he walks yeah. out of the press conference when he's asked a good question by a professional journalist that has the duty to ask these questions. And he says, do you believe you will remain the manager if you finish seventh? Right. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. because he can't no. answer that one. He doesn't, nor the players believe that he will be the manager if that's the case. So Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Hoo -hoo -hoo. And I mentioned Rashford. Makes sense for yeah. me to mention Anthony Gordon, mate. Anthony Gordon yeah. is balling out this season. Anthony really Gordon, a hundred percent, just like Kobe Maino, should go to Euro 2024 ahead of a Marcus Rashford in this team. Anthony Gordon and Jack Grealish for me are the left wingers that England should play in the Euros. Stick with Foden yeah. in the middle and Madison, and look at the options yeah. that it is. Come on! I mean, the the thing about Gordon for me is the, is the fight. It's the fight you want to see in Rashford. Right. Yep. It's it that that uh, that work ethic that Off -ball um, movement, yep. he just he chases. Yeah, he chases every ball down to the mm -hmm. last second. Um, and, you know, barring somebody buying Mickey Van de Ven actual ice skates, uh, Anthony Gordon was going to get a goal, whether you like it or not, or another assist, if whether you like it or not. And Alexander Izak is the same way. If you can keep this kid healthy, um, he's going to do what he's already done, which is he became the first. Newcastle player since Alan Shearer mm. uh, to put 20 goals in in all competitions in a season, which is uh, that's a bonkers statistic, in my opinion, considering a lot of the, the players that have been through uh, through Newcastle. And yeah, it is one that they spent the most money on or very close to the most money. And they are doing this. Yeah. Oh, woe is me. They spent a whole bunch of money on Sandro Tonali. Didn't know his betting pass. Didn't know the help that he needed. That sort of thing. Um, but they're doing this with so many injuries beyond that, too. Harvey Barnes comes back from a long-term injury, and he looks like... He, mm -hmm. he, he just looks reinvigorated. He looks fun. Uh, they just locked down Joe Linton. They have some players that they can build upon, um, and they made Spurs look silly. And they punched Big Ange in the mouth. And it's going to be really interesting to see whether Big Ange remains positive after a drubbing like that, because it is weird. It is weird to see Spurs who plays more positive, they still are very fun to watch, mm -hmm. go completely absent for a game that meant as much as that game meant. And they did it several games ago, too. It's like they get lulled into a false sense of security, mm -hmm. and they lost three zip at Craven Cottage to Fulham. I was not expecting that either. Whoa. So Big Ange still has some lessons to learn, and it's going to be the difference between Big Ange at Spurs, whether or not he's one-dimensional or he's three-dimensional. And right now, you have some people uh, mm. wrestling between those two. I still think Spurs are going to come good. I still think Spurs are going to do very well. They're going to play Champions League football, um, and they're going to win it out. Um, but I think that Newcastle was a punch in the face that was much deserved well, and I, much needed. I don't think Spurs. if Ange Postecoglou doesn't get Champions League football, he's having a bad season because my expectations no, I, were I top six. Yeah. So if he right. does get Champions League football, I think he's punching over – what he has for starters. Yeah. And yeah, he's he's building his foundations. I believe that Spurs team, you can see the core being built. Vuskovic is gonna mm -hmm. come next season. <laughs> yeah, I buddy. know. Very yeah, young. Berikval is gonna come next season. And I do mm -hmm. believe another offensive mid, I see already interest in Danny Olmo. If Spurs yep. get Danny Olmo, they have Danny Olmo, James Madison, Brennan Johnson, Lucas Bergval. 
Lo Celso won't stay if this is the case, but the amounts of creative no. midfielders, Kuluzevsky there, is completely different. And this is a landscape with Andrzej Pashtagoglu that can be a very good style of play. And a style of play that's, look, the Premier League next season, you're going to have Arsenal, Man City, mm -hmm. for sure staying on top with Arteta and Guardiola. You'll have Liverpool with a new manager that will have to finish top four to impress. You have Newcastle, you have Aston Villa, you have Tottenham, all teams that are likely to finish top six. And then you have Man United and Chelsea that want to prove their reputation is right and stay in the mm. top six. So, look, I'm mega excited. And imagine a West Ham getter Jose Mourinho as manager. <laughs> Yeah. after yeah. David Moyes. It could happen. I don't think Jose would say no to the Hammers. So, and Paqueta. Uh, that would be, going to that would be so odd. Oh my mm. days. But let us know. What do you want us to talk <laughs> about in the Premier League in future podcasts? And we will go bold and mention you guys of the comment section. We mention your names if you go with a bold topic. And now, Wonder uh, uh, Kids. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. uh, I mean, just... Drawing that bridge from Premier League to Wonder Kids, um, as much as it hurts to bring up that Anfield loss again mm -hmm. for Liverpool to Crystal Palace, uh, yes. um, everything's fresh. That the Wonder Kid that caught our eye very Adam clearly, Wharton. Adam Wharton. And I remember watching him at Blackburn. He wasn't as I mean, I, for me, it's how well does he develop under Glasner, Glasner, whatever his name is. Oscar how well does Glasner. he develop Oliver, at Glasner. Palace before he makes that next move? But Wharton ate up so much ground, um, which is hard to do, even against a, a shocked and, and um, you know, battered Liverpool midfield, uh, especially coming off of that weird loss mm -hmm. again. Um, Adam Wharton was the biggest reason why Crystal Palace handed them their first defeat at home in the Premier League in 29 games. You know? It's and since 2017. And, uh, uh, it's against crazy. Crystal Palace. That's so mad, crazy. Britain. And this match at Crystal but, Palace against Liverpool validates that the kings of buying players in the championship, it's them. Eze yeah. looks phenomenal for Crystal yeah. Palace. Olise, wonderful from mm. Reading. And now Adam Watson from Blackburn, wonderful business too. If they sign a player from championship... More times than not, they're ballers. They're ballers, yeah. mate. And he's left-footed, this Adam Morton, which makes mm -hmm. him a very interesting option for England in the future. Who's Calvin yes. Phillips? <laughs> Next to yeah. Adam Morton, fully developed, maybe. Let's wait well, and see, because in duels, I believe Wharton is better than Calvin Phillips. And passing accuracy, of obviously, Calvin Phillips is better with the experience that he has, but he's just getting mm. started. He's just getting well, started. Alex oh, Calvin Phillips also has uh, Gareth Southgate's cell number, or he's on speed dial or something. Um, so he's got have blackmail it, against him. Maino no, didn't that's have true. it. And now he's right there. True. And Kobe Maino is. is in the top 10 of the Golden he's Boy. Looking. And people, try to guess. Comment yeah. down below, players that you believe are in the top 10. But I'll announce it just now. Top 10 Golden Boy. Football benchmark mm -hmm. index ranking this season until now. Lamin Yamal's first. Second, mm -hmm. João Neves. Third, Alejandro mm -hmm. Garnacho. Should be playing left wing. Fourth, Warren Zayer Emery. Fifth, Lenny Yoro. For some, the best defender in league on this season. Savio sixth. Seventh, Kobe Maino. Eighth, Rico Lewis. Ninth, Gerald Hato. Mm -hmm. And tenth, the new signing of Atletico de Madrid, Artur Vermeuren. And by the end of this season, Pau Kubarzi will sh for sure be top five. <laughs> Jarel, Jarel Hato is a little, that's a little bit of a surprise for me. That's to a little bit of a surprise. It's, uh, to be in the top ten. I think I mean, Vermeuren's surprising for me. With Kubarzi's here? Mm, yeah. A bit, a bit, uh, but a he bit. did. Uh, it's late, it's, I know. A it's, late bloomer. He's clearly staggered because he, you know, he won Royal Antwerp that, that championship. Or no and, Chavi Simmons. Um, like... He well, he's probably too old. Is he, though? Uh, yeah, you're right. He, he probably is. Yeah. <laughs> he is he's he is. probably too old. But I mean, he's, no I think he is there's no Chavi Simmons. the big 2-0 now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else off. The, I'd have to look at a like a list to see if there was anyone that missed. But that seems Gavi's pretty been fair. injured. Yeah, no, it, let me know right. being first, too. It's he's only Kubarzi that, for me, is like the one that's yeah. got True. to, got True. to well, buy the NB but, there. But that literally happened like a month ago, a month and a half. I mean, that's how fresh this is. I mean, how many times is Xavi's team going to see 
well, who's next, right? Gil we we call in Gil Fernandez. Exactly. We call in Gil Fernandez up. Pal Prim. Who are we call in next? Come Fernandez, on, people. I think. Mark Bernal. I think yeah, Fernandez you're probably right. Really is going to be next, I think. Yeah. And he deserves wow. with the with the game that he's playing for Barca Atleti just started now. Come on. Well, yeah, it's true. Well, another uh, another wonder kid I got to bring up is Messino. Oh, uh, yes. William Estadao scores his first professional goal. Obviously, if you haven't been following Abel Ferreira, right, and Paul Marish, uh over the years, you've missed out on Endrick. You've missed out on quite a few others that have gone on to play. But William Estadao is seen as the next, right, the next mm -hmm. coming. Um, and on his first professional start, First professional goal, mm -hmm. um, and he's following in the, the footsteps of all the Palmerish Wonder kids before him. But I, I think you don't do that if you don't have a good manager, right? <laughs> and they still have a good manager. And they have somehow kept a good manager. It's true. Um, so it's, manager? it's impressive, but Messino is coming. Back, Abel Ferreira has won back-to-back -back Brasileiro titles for Palmeiras. Abel Ferreira has won, has won two Copa Libertadores in his time. Yeah. And Abel Ferreira has developed Hendrik towards the sale of Real Madrid. And I know Real yep. Madrid knew about Hendrik before he played first-team football. And now is helping Messi develop to, to a great player. Yeah. That's Come on, yeah, it's, yeah. it's realism. And Luis Guillermo was the player... Another player of Palmeiras that is a very good wonder kid to watch offensive mid. But Messi yep. is the player with the most guarantees. In South America, Kendri Paez, Messi, yep. uh, Echeveri, Agustin Roberto. Very interesting players are leaving South America this season. Yep. Like, and, and there's the new River player, uh, Mamarch, uh, the release clause. I'm sure you know who it is. 16 years old. Mar Marsh. Mas, Mar Mar Mas Mar Ma Ma Marsh? Mas Mastantuano? Or yes, Mast uh, Mastantuano. I, I can't say his name either. Of Dan. that realm. Yeah. He, <laughs> of that realm. He's, he's, <laughs> he is very good. Uh, I mean, he's still in there with Echeverry. He's still in there with a lot of... But they're they're getting their time there. But yeah, Ma I, I can't even say it. But they also have million. another guy. Yeah, really they also close. have another guy, Ian uh, Subiabre. Sub Subiabre, I think he's a striker. Mm -hmm. uh, Rivers, Rivers teaming with talent as well. <laughs> so it's... Do. S South America, man. But Independiente, you know our love for Independiente del Valle, mm -hmm. the Ecuadorian team that has helped to uh, to deliver us Kendry Paez. I think if uh, if you're looking for any positives beyond Cole Palmer for Todd Boley, it's the fact that they have figured out a way to get Kendry Paez uh, also, before all the hubbub around him really took hold so uh that's a second silver lining it's just you're probably not going to see him at stanford bridge for a little while and you have Cachedo um, there too. just because of his age another equatorian oh that's, oh, that's actually gosh. interesting that and two another in independiente too exactly. idv yeah exactly it's... mate and it, it chesco too could be landing in the Premier yeah. league chesco 13 goals mm -hmm. this season and only 13 starts a player that look yeah. we believe Opinda is another phenomenal striker at RB Leipzig. They could prefer to stay with Opinda another season and sell yeah. Benjamin Chesco for like forty to fifty million. I think I think that's the realm. That's the money that's being asked. So that yeah. can be the case. Any last mentions, Bretton? A good Euros would go a long way for Benjamin Sesko. That's for sure. A good Euros, uh, for which sure. I, I think I think is yeah, I think is in his future. Yeah. The only other mention uh, we we keep bringing this up. Listen, Besiktas is is I said it oh, right. Mate. I did it. Besiktas. Besiktas, uh, Besiktas right, is having a, then, a bad year. <laughs> yeah, they did. They did. They're just having a bad year. But there is Semi Kilikshoy, right? Ah. There is. Semi Kilik uh, Shoy, 10 goals since December 25th to go with three assists. Um, it, it, just a major, major bright spot. Um, and, you know, we keep mentioning these Turkish talents, but these Turkish talents should be on display for the full national team come summer in Germany. And I'm really intrigued to see in whether or group. not they get the time they deserve in your group. <sighs> um, if that's the case, I think I think Portugal's professional enough to to be able to take him down although i think orkin cooks who is uh starting to build kind of a villain uh persona uh, against portugal and benfica maybe because he he wants to uh hurt you guys in the euros i don't know uh but no there's there's a young core uh but this striker has been the prob probably one of the only good things about besiktas season they're still in fourth place 
Uh, but it's not not what they're used to. And to be honest, it hasn't been what they've been used to for the past several years. Uh, mm. They've definitely fallen behind Fenerbahce. They've definitely Galatasaray. fallen behind Galatasaray before them. So, uh, But he is one you got to watch, especially because he's an out-and-out striker. And whether or not anyone actually comes to to grab the kid, I don't know. I mean, but there are some really good talents. But we've right. seen what has happened so far with Arda Goulart. Mm-hmm. Um not getting as much time as we probably would have liked. Mm, Should have done true. a stepping stone it's club. true, and uh, I've seen some rumors about Portuguese team being interested in Kili Choi. I don't know if it's yeah. going to be the case, but if there's more news, we will for sure let you guys know in the yes, podcast. Sir. About young players in Portugal, Gustavo Sá, great assist against Porto, one to watch. Nice. And my tip for the por- uh, for the FC Wonder Kid FC Wonder Kid listeners it's pay attention to Aroca not just yeah. because of the players Rafa Murica great player Cristo Gonzalez great player but because of the manager i'm going to go bold and say Ruben Amorim leaves <laughs> Portugal. The next big manager leaving Portugal will be Daniel Souza. He's going from Aroca to Braga next season. Daniel Souza already confirmed and at Braga Daniel Souza will finish top 3. I think top three well, in Portugal a, is not easy to say because it's Porto, Benfica, and Sporting, and Braga well, finishing um, could be the case. Uh-huh. How how many years was Amarim at Braga before he moved to Sporting? He was months. He was like fifteen games. Months. <laughs> so you know that that could happen too he, with this uh, Aruka. Uh, with the Aruka, go because Sporting's going to have a very large opening. No, he, uh, they paid. They paid. Uh, they paid. Um, Braga paid, I think, a million to Aruka. To get Daniel Sosa, uh, because they knew uh, Daniel Sosa is that guy. Uh, 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 they knew okay. Daniel, and when Sporting took the risk to get Ruben Amorim, ten million, it was yeah. the third most expensive ma- uh, transfer of a manager ever. Third, mm. and that was in COVID times when clubs weren't rich, and they had to make man. Uh, they had to get Paulinho from Braga because. More uh, mm-hmm. Ruben Amorim wanted, but then he develops an old man, develops a Tiago yeah. Tomás. He manages to make make riches with what he's given, and that's why Ruben Amorim is one of the best at what he does. And Daniel Sosa is thirty nine, and he's another one that is same age as Ruben. And you mentioned at Braga, cool. mate. He like Ruben yeah. in his f- first ten matches at Braga, he won a league cup for Braga. A team mm. that is not used to winning <laughs> titles. He Fuck. didn't lose yeah. any of his 14 first games at Braga. And that's why wow. like Sporting was like, no, we got to pay up to a guy that beats Benfica away with Braga for the first time in 60 years. At 34 well, there you years, go. Old, uh, years old at the time. So well, that's there a you go. Well, well <laughs> yes. it, it, it is. So as we as we sign off this week, I just have to give you a little reminder. We are two months away from the Euros beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are also, you know, we're going to have champions. We're going to have all sorts of stuff uh, getting announced over this next time. So you can expect a whole host of Wonder Kids to watch, all sorts of content. Um, and I, I really do. I'm extra excited. If there is anyone out there that knows I'm bringing kids to Portugal during the Euros, during the knockout rounds, when which we obviously hope they're, you know, still there, Portugal. Uh, but if you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments, places we need to hit, especially places that love children. Um, you know, please let us know. I'd, I'd love a tour guide while we're over there that's not named Alex because he's too busy for me. <laughs> he's too busy. He's got to watch all the football and commentate on all the football and all the goings on. No, I'm just kidding, Alex. We'll see each other, right? <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. But it is, it's hard to believe we're two months away from uh, from the Euros, from the Copa America. Um, it's good stuff, man. A good Copa stuff. America uh, that I'm going to be rooting for Uruguay and Bielsa. Come on. There you go. <laughs> and there Euros, you go. obviously, for Portugal. But let us know, people. If you're listening until now, for sure, like, smash the like button if you're here in the hour 18 minutes. And thank yep. you for listening until now to the FC Wonder Kid podcast. Thank you for going. Bold. So long.